look who knows so much, huh? Am I going mad? Or did the word think escape your lips? The David Brudnoy Show. You're that smart. Let me put it this way. Have you ever heard of Plato, Aristotle, Socrates? Yes. Morons. A talk show that matters. Truly, you have a dizzying intellect. Wait till I get going! WBZ News Radio 1030. Speaking of speaking of dizzying dizzying intellects, we have George Carlin with us tonight. Uh, maybe not quite Plato, but pretty darn good. George was here with us for a previous book a couple of years ago. We had a great time with him, and I hope he'll join tonight and get in and say something to or ask something of George Carlin, who began in his per professional career at age 19 in a radio station in Shreveport, Louisiana. So radio for you is like coming home again, isn't it? It, it is, although I did I saw it as a, as a way station at that time. Sure. And it, at age 19, how did you know, right? Uh, yeah. Well, I, I, I was, uh, when I was 11, I had my plan. Radio first, stand up next, and then maybe, maybe acting, but I'm glad that kind of changed. I'm glad I stayed with stand up. Even, even at 11, you knew? Yeah, in my, my fifth grade autobiography, as it were, uh, the last page was What You'd Like to Be. And I had actor, comedian, impersonator, announcer, disc jockey. <laughs> you, you did the acting for a while, but as you said, yes. the thing that really has captivated you and, and made an audience that is, that is not just a fandom, but is almost a cultdom hmm. of George Carlin has been the stand-up that has provided over the years for you a forum for commenting on the things that really irritate you. Yes. And there's a lot of stuff that irritates you out there. Um, what, what are your current gripes? What, what, what is getting under the George Carlin skin? Well, there are probably uh, more of them than I can uh, reference quickly, but I'm always um, put off a bit by the way the language, uh, the language of uh, American culture is um, twisted, abused, and so forth. Uh, uh, as an example, this word issues, which... Um, which, you know, we used to have problems. No one has problems anymore. They have issues. He has issues. Uh, no one has a drug problem. They have a chemical dependency issue. In fact, that dog, that incident in San Francisco with the, the dog that, um, I guess, attacked and killed that, the, the woman, I believe. Uh, about a week later, they were interviewing someone, a, a gentleman from that building. And he said, well, it was well known in the neighborhood that that dog had issues with other male <laughs> dogs. So it's just, those are the sorts of things. They're, you know, they're... they're Endless, and I'll I'll think of some more as we go along. I hope. Well, things things like the perversion of the language have bothered you for a long time. And you're a guy who's uh, in many ways self-educated. You were mm -hmm. thrown out of a lot of schools along the way, and then finally just have abandoned the whole notion. Some I left voluntarily, and some I was asked to leave. I was right. given my hat. You were given your hat. Uh, high school, you didn't even yes. go all the way through that. No, I, 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 have, I have credit, officially credit, uh, for nine years in, in the New York uh, system. I, I attended the, uh, the uh, first semester of 10th grade, but that didn't count. I, I was restless, and um, I had a goal and a plan, as I implied about when I was 11 years old. I had a plan for my, my life, and I, I knew what I... I felt I knew what I could be and, and wanted to be in, in the entertainment business somehow to be like Danny Kay. That was sort of my simplified, my oversimplified goal to be like Danny Kay in the movies, be funny in the movies. And uh, and I and uh, I was good in uh, you know scholastically I did well, but uh, I, I didn't take well to regulation and authority. And no one showed. would have guessed. No. no authority, no. And that included being kicked out of, and I'm proud of this litany. I'm, I was kicked out of the altar boys, the choir boys, the Boy Scouts, summer camp, a couple of schools, and the Air Force. So uh, that's a nice list, and uh, and I left each of them, uh, you know, on, on good terms, but uh, on my own. Terms. Well, you had issues. Uh, I had issues. Another thing, they had issues. another words out there is is the word situation. If you notice, we oh, yeah. have a weather situation. We have a a, a, a mid east uh, peace process situation. Right. The, the fear, and uh, you point this out uh, both in your previous book and in your new one, Napalm, and Silly Putty. I mentioned it in your in your stand up for years is people are loath to use the word itself. They love euphemism. They yeah. love to to sort of. Mu mushy eyes, if that's the word, and make soften. mushy the language yeah. by taking away the hard, objective words. They don't right. like the good Anglo-Saxon words. They like the sort of romantic words, romance language and, words, which soften things. And, and they soften experience, yes. Yeah. I think there's a, there's a, there's a sort of a fear 
of uh, the real. Uh, and I'll give you some examples, uh, some further examples, and they're all centered on, on uh, well, not all of them, but, but largely around hotels where, where I spend a lot of time. But they're, they're for instance, uh, do not disturb. It was very direct, very simple, and declarative. It's an imperative sentence, actually. Do not disturb. That's it, folks. Now we have privacy, please. There's this begging, sort of, to, to be left alone, to, to not intrude on me. Um, no smoking was the same way. Uh, thank you for not smoking. As if you should be grateful that someone's not giving you a side stream tumor. Um, room service became in-room dining. I was at a hotel recently where they told me the restaurant was being renovated and I, I, I said so it's not open the, uh, the conversation was just beginning and I said the restaurant's not open they said no we're having restaurant enhancement and, and this is done routinely and I, and I just think it's part it, they're not quite euphemisms as so much as they're euphemistic it's a, it's a retreat from the real when, when you uh, have gone through your various phases as a stand up uh, in, in, should we say interpreter of our culture okay. and I look at you that way because I think that what you do is is contextualize our world uh, in your particular framework, mm -hmm. and there is a there is a Carlinian uh, framework out there. And if one has watched you, you, you long ago gave me your CDs, and and they have been lent out to friends and never returned. But I've listened to them many many times. I know what your framework is. Uh, things fit into a pattern, a pattern of say it straight, uh, don't mushify. Uh, don't believe that authority is always right. Don't just say things because you heard others say them, but figure out, do you really mean it? Uh, some people have liked that. You've had periods mm -hmm. in which people didn't like that. Mm -hmm. uh, have the audiences changed more than George <coughs> Carlin has changed over the years? Have the audiences become, in recent years, so apprehensive <coughs> of reality, so fearful that they might say w a word that is politically cockamamie? Yeah. And, uh, as I call Thank PC. you for avoiding the, the I know. Uh, I, 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 political, I, I just I want to <laughs> use a word that starts yeah. with C and ends with rap, but I won't use it. Uh, it's, it's, to my mind, just horror, the, the, this PC yes, nonsense. Yeah. Um, uh, our audience is afraid of... I mean, you, you listen to, to Leno and Letterman, yeah. and while they'll kid about politics a lot and about stars, they never really touch the fundamentals no, no, it, of what ails it, us it's superficial and no. it's um, and uh, that's not to 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 mean uh, that i'm being critical it is a critical statement though and there, there's a superficiality about topical humor where it's yeah. just really celebrity jokes um, my own sense of of audiences in general first of all there's uh, there's a uh, you know i have a confusion about it because i get a, a a devoted audience i get for the most part when i go to people's hometowns when i go to symphony hall here or or somewhere in in a person's hometown i'm on sale for a month there and, and there's a kind of uh, focus of of hardcore fans who come to see you knowing what you do living in your context already and welcoming what you do in my case uh in other situations, such as working in Las Vegas, which takes some of the pressure off those other cities for me and allows me to sit for two weeks at a time and write, um, in those places I get more of a varied random audience, less hardcore fans, less committed people. And that's where I notice the uh, the tightening of the sphincters in the audience as I approach certain um, topics. It, it only has to be a topic. Children, for is what people say. Well, what's what's still taboo? Children. The attack that I, I made, it, so to speak. It's it's not that really. It's it's just a, a criticism of this cult of parenthood that we've developed in this country. This this again this exaggerated cult because we everything in this country gets overdone, and that's one of the things that I like to look at. So the audiences have changed in that. Uh, and again, my, my view is skewed because they're my audience. But generally, the culture has changed in the last 30 years, certainly. And therefore, uh, all forms of writing, and I just have one, uh, I'm just one form of writing, uh, have changed. What about uh, genetics? Uh, you, were, you were seen on a, on a uh, program somewhere on, video, on television a while ago saying that you owe a lot of your mm -hmm. success to having good genes. And yes. I think most people, if they're honest, recognize we, we're grateful for good parents. Yeah. We're grateful good, for good health that we have it. And we're, we're glad that we don't have 
crummy parents who gave us bad, bad, bad things that we inherited. Not that nurture is unimportant, no. but nature is the dirty little secret for a lot of people. The yeah. fear of acknowledging that, in fact, you can be blessed by your genes or cursed by them. Um, tell us a little bit about your good genes and how they've well, applied to your career in life. I always, I always say, for all we know, we may be grateful to the the. Uh, uh, grandma's milkman. Mm -hmm. you, you really don't know right. what's in that line. Um, and I think more things are genetic than we give uh, credit to, although, as you say, nurture and environment have a lot to do with things. They reinforce things. But I think such things as bravery and hard work are largely uh, genetic uh, traits. I think they, they'll say, people, I say, well, I'm very lucky. I got these uh, g good genetic markers for language and for uh, for being verbal and self-expression. And, and and they say, yeah, but you worked hard. And I say, well, for all we know, that's a genetic trait too. The the need to, to work and produce things as opposed to uh, being somewhat lazy. So. Um, in my own case, my grandfather, Dennis Beery, who came over to America from uh, Ireland when he was dissatisfied with his uh, stepmother, uh, didn't like the stepmother, something, I, I don't know the details of the, of the family, but in that case, but uh, he, his uh, father remarried and he didn't like the stepmother, so he, he just left. That's, I, I'm like that. I, if I don't like something and can't change it, I leave it. It's, I'll just leave it alone. Just, I'll, be, I'll see you later. I'm the one who used to be here. So he came over here, and he was self-educated, self-taught, and uh, and he wrote out the works of Shakespeare, or, or to at least a large portion of them. In his adult years, he wrote out longhand the works of Shakespeare because of the joy it gave him. To to write down what he was reading, yes. somebody else's words. So yes, to, 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 just to savor it. the words oh. letter by letter, longhand with a pen, wow. and spoke uh, and spoke always at the dinner table. I'm told by my mother um, of language issues, <laughs> topics about language. <laughs> and she was very, um, uh, very aware of, uh, the Irish have a, a something of a, of, a, of, a, of a disproportionate feel for language and yes. expression, I think. And, and she, a genetic feel. Perhaps, yes, you know, indeed. All Irishmen talk on and talk on. And right, and, which, and, and uh, some of them are able go, to... Go to Ireland, you'll never be lonely, right? No, but, and, and some of them are able to put it on paper and, mm -hmm. and it, it becomes even something better, I guess. Uh, but she, I, I, the, the issue, the issue, the, um, now you have me thinking <laughs> in those terms, and it wasn't an issue, it was an incident, that's yeah. what I meant. Right. The incident I, I, I often refer to is, um, I, I, for instance, uh, I brought her, uh, there was a day when, when I asked her what the word peruse meant, and she said, well, let's get the dictionary. She always would, would do that to me, even when she knew, and she usually knew. Uh, so I got the dictionary out for peruse, and I looked it up, and uh, she said, now use it in a sentence, and I, said, and I did, and she said, okay, now that's peruse. So the next day, uh, when I brought her her newspaper, which I sometimes did, I brought her the World Telegram and Sun, and I said, here, Mom, you might want to peruse this. And she said, well, I'll give it a cursory glance. <laughs> and there I was, right back to the dictionary. Yeah, go. She, she would call me in, and she'd be reading something. She'd say, look at the power of these words. Look at this. Look how these words cut. They just cut right through. Look at that. Look how he says that. Look how the author says that. You know. So she uh, encouraged that in me, and, and that's the nurture part. Let's take some calls. On number 254-1030. David, good evening. You're on WBZ with George Carlin, the author of Napalm and Silly Putty. Good evening. Hey, hey Dave. Hey, George. How are you doing? Good evening. How are you, David? Hey, I just wanted to say I've seen you twice at Symphony Hall, George. And, uh -huh. You know, I enjoyed myself immensely. I brought my best friend, and we were cracking up. Uh -huh. It had to do with uh, right near the end of your show, you were, uh, this is like 10 years ago, you were talking about, you know, masturbation or whatever, so many uh -huh. different words for it. Why, but, sure. <laughs> but we were like dying. And uh, anyway, I just want to say also, I'm sorry to hear about your wife passing you. away a few years ago. Thank you. And uh, that, you know, uh, your CDs and tapes of, uh, you know, during moments of stress or, you know, uh, difficult times for me mm -hmm. in my life, I won't go into it, but, you know, and uh, dealing with my, you know, own turmoil and my own problems of, like, mm -hmm. always made me crack up when I put them on in the car. Well, that's uh, nice. Thank you for, for making that contact. And, and, and especially like when it... You know, it comes to like the commercials you've done. You know, take off on commercials. And yes. Probably for Saturday Night Live, I've ever touched on them. Yeah, you, know, you were doing them in the early '70s and stuff sure. like that, and on your tapes, and you know, and it was uh, it was the coolest thing to have your tape or have one of your record albums in the '70s. You know, in the '70s prior before anyone else ever yeah. did. You know, it was a risky deal yeah, like for some folks. Being passed around under the desk and being yeah. brought home. You know, hey, did you hear what Colin said on this or that? You know, so. 
anyway, I just wanted to pass that on and it kind of... Well, that's you know, nice of you. That, that means a lot to me, David. Thank you very much. Right. Bruce, good evening. You're on WBZ with George. Hi, David. Thank evening, you sir. for taking my call. Hi, You're welcome, sir. Thank you. George, uh, what can I say? Uh, I grew up with you. And, oh, good. Uh, I'm glad to hear it. Thank you. Uh, I have every single um, record you ever put out, record if you're <laughs> not CDs, records. Yes, they are a record of something that occurred, right. <laughs> and I don't know for what reason, George, but uh, one of my favorite of all times was from Take Off and Put On, mm -hmm. uh, The Indian Sergeant. Oh, yeah. That was the piece that got me going in television. That was a, it was a, the idea was it was a fish out of water routine where I said the Indians, uh, being such good fighters, must have been more organized than they seem in the movies, and therefore they must have had sergeants. Okay. And I did a kind of uh, the typical uh, New York Brooklyn kind of working class guy as an Indian, and it got me on Merv Griffin, it got me on Mike Douglas, and it, it launched so so to speak that career of mine in the in the mid sixties. I'm glad you like that. Uh, too I want to pick things real quick, yes. I don't want to keep you, but Please. Uh, the one of the words that gets to me under my skin is closure. Oh, yes. We don't mourn anymore. It's closure. Yeah. And uh, uh, and the other one is traumatic. You know, Johnny yeah. lost his blanket, so it's a traumatic experience. Yeah. And, uh, that's the other thing that really bothers me. One quick question, Judge. Sure. Are you going to be doing any book signings in the area? I'm doing um, Wordsworth tomorrow. I think that's in Cambridge. Yes, it is. What, what time are you doing it? Uh, it's, it's, it's early evening. It's probably 7.30 or 8 o'clock. You're going to air opposite my program then. Uh, well, we'll uh, this is not nice of you, by well, the way. A lot of people with headsets in line. I would hope so. Well, uh, right. amen, Judge, because a lot of times the book signings are done during the day when everybody is at work. So uh, I look forward and I'll be over there. I'll tell, and, you, uh, I'll tell you another thank one you. besides traumatic. Surreal. Surreal. Yeah. People that they can't describe something that says, "Oh, it's surreal, man! It was really, it was like surreal." It was. Hey, they, it thanks was, for your comments. Surreal is just a little better you, than George, real. Yeah. And, and God bless you. And uh, I hope you have many, many more years of success. And it was fun growing up with you. Thank and, uh, you. And uh, we look forward, David. And thank you very much for having George. You're welcome, on. Bruce. Thank you very much for okay, being with us. Bye, bye, Bruce. Pleasure to have George Carlin here tonight. Uh, he will tomorrow. It'll be words were 30 Brattle Street in Boston. It's right, right in uh, Harvard Square. At uh, seven to eight thirty, signing. We do some reading too, a little of that. Too? I don't think so. Yeah. If they have that written down, it's no, news no, no, to no. me. It's a signing and giving away part of your fortune to lucky <laughs> people. Right. Yeah, that's wonderful. Okay. That part I don't mind. And you'll also be doing something on the Fox News Channel with my old and good friend Paula Zahn. Paula she worked Zahn. here at Channel Seven years ago. She was she's one of the best people on that morning show on CBS ever she, had. She's a really good person. She hasn't yeah. been completely Murdoch eyes. There's still yeah, a green there. Yeah, you can see it in her in her eyes. And uh, this will be on, and then you'll be doing something with people on other places named W, but we don't deal with that. No. Let's take another call here. Our number two five four ten thirty. Mark, good evening. Hello. Good evening, good evening Mark. Good evening, David. Hi, Mark. Mark's Hello, Mark. Dartmouth. Go ahead, sir. How are you? Uh, thanks very much for taking my call. I You're can't welcome. believe I have the opportunity to speak with uh, your honored guest, George Collins. Thank you. Uh, good evening, George. Good evening. In light of your educational experience, which you just uh, mm -hmm. gave us a little bit of background on, and uh, the, the fact that you have a strong command of the English language, I'm going to guess that you do a lot of reading. Am I right? I do. I, I read mostly nonfiction, though. I'm, I'm woefully unread in, in the classics or in fiction in general. Uh, my flip uh, answer and explanation of that is to say I'm not interested in, in other people's um, uh, imaginings. Uh, but, of course, it's, uh, it's a function of time. I love my writing. I'd rather write than read. And uh, the th I think the thing is I have a retentive memory, and, and I don't... And, and I, I, I absorb things, uh, such as language, kind of without trying very hard... So so I think I, I've, I've, I've just taken on a lot of things that were without really having to do a lot of reading. I've just, I, I gravitate toward anything about language or words or communicating. Well, that's an incredible gift, and I want to thank you for passing that on to us. Can you tell me, uh, lastly, what is your favorite book? What is the best book, in your opinion, you've ever read? Well, uh, I'm going to uh, uh, give you a, a, an author uh, who uh, has done some fiction, but whose nonfiction I really admire, and that's Gore Vidal, just because of his his um, his uh, positions as a social critic. I, uh, but um, I, when I said woefully unread. You can, make, you can underline it and put it in bold face. I, I don't even have a favorite book to tell you, although um, I love reading about physics, both the, the very macro and the very mi micro. I, I love astrophysics, I love quantum physics, and I, they remove me from reality, as it were, and, and I just love that. That's very enlightening. Thanks again for <laughs> my Thank question. You. Thank you Thank for the call. 
physics, George. Yeah, I a love new, it. A I new element. This is not. I've read your books now, both of them, and the physics has not come up in this. I no. expect a new treatise from you, a breaking the physics barrier, something, finding the unified field theory, That's, explaining I'm, the nature of reality. I'm going to. I'm going right? to. Fig- I'm going to get gravity into the mix and get it so that everyone understands how they interact. I, I expect that that will happen. Jerry, good evening, Jerry on WBC. David, Hi. it's always a pleasure, Mr. Collin. It's an honor to be speaking with you. Hi, Jerry. How are you doing? Very good. You know, having grown up in a, an Irish family, mm-hmm. um, the house was often filled with laughter. Yes, and yes. And I, in growing up, noticed that there tends to be a group of people or, or different groups of people that, whether they come to finding things funny uh, easier or more natural than others, uh, and then later in life I noticed that there is a definitive difference in what men find funny and what women find funny. Mm-hmm. Now, being somebody who has been able to craft just a normal thought into making, you know, making this a funny thought, I'm wondering, uh, I'd like to hear your thoughts about the, the kind of how people come to find something funny. Have you, have you dissected the idea of humor and, and how it is different, say, for the Irish than, say, for maybe the Polish and, mm-hmm. and how it's different for men and women? Well, of course, uh, one thing that limits me is my experience with other groups. And uh, the Irish uh, aspect is the one, obviously, I'm the most familiar with. And and my neighborhood and the families in my neighborhood uh, weren't so um, first generation that there was a um, a strong Irish feel. I, I would notice it at times, of course. Uh, in my own home, there w- there wasn't that. Although my mother uh, was proud of of being Irish. Uh, but uh, th- what I would say is, I think um, I, I think uh, um, experience generational experience by, uh, by uh, I think some things last uh, experiences uh, the Jews have a have a very powerful in-group humor that has helped them survive it is said uh, and or at least deal with some of the the horrors in, in their own history and I think the Irish uh, I think it's very similar for the Irish in that um, the experience with Britain for so long was such a tortured one uh, I think they have uh, I think there's a need I think there's a wonderfully therapeutic thing obviously I don't just think it it's, it's been shown to a uh, therapeutic value to laughter it's a it's a it's a pressure Pressure valve. It, it's a safety valve. It um, it produces endorphins, which which obviously by definition kill pain. So so there's more to that than just the simple fact. Uh, and, and I think it's um, I think people who are humorless are essentially. Uh, not well balanced. Nixon was an example. I don't mean just to ridicule someone who comes in for a lot of abuse, but Nixon was famously humorless and was very forced, and he was a man who was very troubled. So uh, there, there's some correlation that's, that it's not taken seriously enough, obviously, to be studied well by science. Uh, I think you're sort of, as it, you know, left out of the scientific circles if you take it too seriously and you want to study it. But there's something there, and, and I wish I could help define it better for you. Well, you, I mean, I think that that safety valve and that uh, uh, a cushion against the bad times is, is probably rings very true. Um, but I'm I'm really curious, you know, having to mm-hmm. try to get on a an equal footing maybe sometimes with women. I find it interestingly confusing how women and men can have totally yes. different senses of humor. Well, I, I notice, and, and other comedians have, have mentioned this uh, over the years, uh, I've heard them in conversations, uh, that women's laughter is more evident in the audience. It's more apparent that there are women in the audience. Uh, I think they laugh more easily in part, and this is just you know some cracker barrel psychology here, I think that... Um, the, the, uh, men have this feeling of being responsible for keeping things in order and together, and that it's they're kind of structural. You know, they, this is our job is to take care, make sure everything's in. And and women are freer, and um, I think freer in a lot of ways. And perhaps that's that's an aspect of it. Perhaps people who take the structure seriously and their their need to guard it and protect it are not able to let those barriers down as quickly and easily as those who are more verbal. For instance, women are more are just more verbal and maybe maybe that's uh, maybe that's a part of it jerry thank you george thank you let's continue don good evening you're on wbz hi, with george carlin hi don hi don go ahead please hi i'm a big fan of you as i have been for a long time thank you um i started uh well i was i first found out about you when i was like about 14 years old and i i got a hold of an album called the amfm 
Yes. And um, I thought it was really hilarious. And at the time, it was pretty outrageous mm -hmm. um, for the material that was on it. And, of course, like my family didn't agree with it, you know, because I was sure. a young person. Yes. But I took a lot of uh, enlightenment out of it. And, and, and it was it, it, it helped me get to a lot of things as far as, you know, is looking at the comedy side of things. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as it is with the, with the other material. Mm -hmm. And then I just kept, you know, every chance I get, you know, I try to listen to new material that you have. Thank you. And I'm glad that you, you know, you, you're continuing to... Uh, well, you want to get the new book, you will, Don. Is what you want to do. Well, that's what and I'm And then you can memorize the good lines in it, like I've got to memorize some of them. I never knew that you were encouraged or started thinking of writing books. And I didn't know about the past book that you had. Well, the first book sold about 750,000 yeah, copies. I was really surprised. <laughs> which all authors drool about. That's called a mega big hit. Yeah. That's, that's, I, that's, I, that's, that's up there in uh, Tuesdays with Maury category. That's really high. Thank that's you a good for what one. you said about um, your own, um, uh, the, 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 some of my humor uh, being of assistance, uh, kind of. Um, because I hear that from time to time i never i never uh count on that you know but uh yeah. and i'm always surprised by it because people will say this rather serious sounding things about the effect of some things that i and i'm obviously other uh, comedians and humorists have done uh, for them indirectly so i thank you for for that well a lot of your material has to do with a lot of everyday life to sure. begin with and you know that's one of the things that attracted me to it and like I said, it enlightens me and, and it helps me get through a lot of things because, I mean, you look at the humor side of things, and especially if it's really good material, then you know it's, it, it, it you know hits the spot. A lot, you know. Yes. Well, you want to continue to do that, and Don and I urge you to read the book, and I thank you for the call. Thanks a lot, on. Don, for the call. Ted, good evening. You're on WBZ. Hello, Ted. Hi. Hi, Ted. Hi, Go ahead, George. Please. Hi, Ted. How are you? Thanks, David. Thank uh, you, sir. In, in my family. Uh, uh, George Carlin was not a was not a something you could listen to. Uh, Smothers Brothers was pretty much a risque thing. Yeah, well, <laughs> like, oh, Mama was. But like I enjoyed your bounce, your, right? your albums always, and I'm, I'm glad to hear you now. Thank you. Uh, when you said you enjoyed reading about physics, I can certainly understand that for a writer to take the time to read is a big luxury. Yes. Um, a book that I've always enjoyed is called The Making of the Atomic Bomb by Richard Rhodes. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I haven't yeah. read that, but I'm sure I'd, I'd, it would interest me. He, he does a very nice job of going through the history of the people and the science behind it. Yes. So if uh, if I can give you that recommendation and well, you ever read it and enjoy it, I'll feel like I gave you something back well, for all the good times you've Well, that, that's nice of you, and thanks very much. Sure. Thanks so much, Ted. We good appreciate luck. the call. Steve, good evening. You're on WBC. Thanks, Ted. Hi. Hello. Yes, go ahead. Hiya. Uh, hi, hi, George. I can barely hear him on the car phone. I, I, I had to call when I heard you were on. Thank you. I, I just want to say, I, when I was 10 or 11 years old, I wore out my copy, my cassette copy of Class Clown. Uh -huh. <laughs> Good for you. And thank I, you. And I thank you for that. I just quickly, I'll take my answer off the phone. I want to know uh, who your early influences uh, were. I know you were very fond of Lenny Bruce, and you got to mm -hmm. meet him before he passed away. Mm -hmm. and, and who today reminds you most of you? I hear a lot of you and Jerry Seinfeld. You guys have the same kind of wry uh, look at the world. You're a little edgier than he is. But but who today reminds you most of you? And I'll, I'll, again, thank you for all of the, uh, sure. the wonderful laugh, and I'll take my uh, my answer off the air. Okay, okay. thank you. There's sure, a man who's used, to, he's used to calling radio shows. If he says, I'll take my answer off the air. Well, if he's in a car, we'd prefer that he put his phone down. I'd okay. say drive carefully. You know, but uh, I'll, I'll work my way backwards. Um, I, I draw from three areas. The language is a big part of my... Of just, you know, looking at how we speak to one another and the, and the words and language and sentences and so forth. Secondly, the, the large world of uh, abortion, killing, rape, genocide, love, hatred, sex, uh, miscegenation, all the things that are larger issues. <laughs> and then there's the smaller world, the one you think of as observational. And I've always enjoyed that too. Uh, chil chil uh, pets, for instance, cats and dogs, how we drive, what's in the refrigerator. Those are the things where I get to touch people in a universal way and, and touch on things that, that we all experience. And... Um, and I too have, uh, and Jerry's not the only other one besides myself. I think I think it's a common thing for comedians to look for frames of reference that exist already, so that you don't need to construct um, a, a context for people. You just say, "Hey, how about that dog of yours?" Remember, and then they know they're there. Uh, on on the influences, I um, as a little as a young boy, Roger Hogan, one of my neighbors, had a had a Spike Jones album, and in those days, albums were true albums. They were seventy eight RPMs, and there were several pages in them, so. 
that they were like photo albums. And uh, we played Spike Jones, and I loved Spike Jones. The Marx Brothers in the movies, and these are earlier um, uh, the radio comedians, uh, the film comedians, people who acted such as Red Skelton, Bob Hope, and uh, Danny Kaye in the movies. And then as an adolescent and a little later than adolescence, the, the, the comedy changed in America. And people like Shelley Berman, Mort Saul, Lenny Bruce, Nichols and May, the people who used a little more uh, intellectual approach to comedy or individual approach uh, were influential. Uh, Ernie Kovacs a little earlier than that, the early Steve Allen. Everyone who was funny ha ha made a mark on me because I was open to it and, and I loved it all really okay talk about a good answer huh excellent answer God. that's a terrific answer we're going to record that and use it okay. for, for now. mike you're on wbz with george carlin good evening mike hi hi george big fan i loved brain dropping hi mike thank you uh i'm i'm weaving dangerously in traffic like the last guy who called on a cell phone and um, before I had my cell phone, I hated people who did that. Right. Um, I wanted to know, is there a way I can stop becoming that which I hate and detest? Well, just alter it sufficiently so that it becomes your style. And then it's individual and, and you're not like all of them. How about a Fisher-Price phone? Should I get one of those maybe and outfit it with a cellular? You'd, you'd probably be talking to more, more interesting people if you did that. That might work. Uh, one last question. Uh, are you for or against the giant puppy killing machine that they're proposing? Uh, why do I not know the reference you're making? Uh, the giant puppy killing machine that, uh, I don't know, it looked good on paper at first, that, and uh, it's just absurd, you know? You, you, might that... help, you might help us a little bit, Mike, by explaining what the giant puppy killing machine yes. is, because George Carlin and I don't want to walk into murky territory. I'm the genial um, well, host here. He's the genial guest. We, it, tell us what it is. I, I understand. It, it, it seems to be some kind of a thing the government wants to do because they, I don't know, to they can't do kill for puppies the, quick enough. To, to kill so, puppies? No. Yeah, you know the no. government. No, and, no, and no, they, no, 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 no. Come on. I know how George likes to make fun of the absurd and how people are pretty stupid, ah. especially the government. And uh, I like to look at um, the giant puppy killing machine concept. It's anything, I you see. know, like those Pentagon golden okay. toilet ah, seats. All right. You must that remember this, is. though. The only reason the government is, as you say, stupid is because it's a, it's a product of the people. Uh, the people are responsible for everything. It's called we the people. So right. blame Human, them. Right. Human uh, error involved. Yeah, more so than I, that. I'm, I'm against the giant puppy killing machine, George. I just wanted to know what your stance was on it. Well, I, I think we've got a clear definition of this. If it disturbs stance. anyone, I'm, I'm happy about it. Absolutely. Really? See, that's what I thought. You see, at first I thought it looked good on paper, uh, <laughs> but then you know, Mike, you're milking the joke. Right. You're milking the joke. You got, you got timing is everything. Once you made the, you know, the punchline, then you kind of stop. You get the laugh, right. and then you move on. And now you're moving on. Goodbye. Kenny, good evening. You're on WBC. Hello, Kenny. Hi. Hi, David. Hi, he George. is the weakest link. Come Hello on. there. Hey, I couldn't great, great to speak with you. Hi, Kenny. I, I'm sorry, I didn't hear your name. Kenny? Kenny, go ahead. Please. How you doing, Kenny? Hey, I'm doing good, George. I'm good. doing good. It's good to speak with you. Thank you. Um, I, I think that I consider myself to be a Carlinist. You know, people want to uh -huh. identify themselves with certain groups, especially in, like, political circles mm -hmm. and, and in the community and everything as to who they are. And I... I I think that you're not only the greatest comedian of all time. I think you're the damn finest human being oh, of wow. all time. Uh-oh. <laughs> well, that's uh, uh, a little uh, hyperbolic, but I'll accept it because it sounds real good. I'm Thank getting you. out the incense, uh, and we're getting on our knees now. Everybody? <laughs> yes, yeah. Doc, Mike, everybody yeah. here ready? Okay. All right. All right, go ahead. Thank George, you. George, for... I, uh, I got brain droppings, and, and uh, I met you briefly there, and you signed it for me, and mm -hmm. I was concerned about how your humor would translate into the written form you know mm -hmm. you it's you it's great to see you in stand up and live because you're so animated and you're 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 a physical comedian also so i was curious to see and i just i i got on the red line to go home and i turned the jacket on the book upside down and i read it and i cackled out loud uh -huh. uh the, during the whole train ride home and and the people on the train with me i'm sure i thought i was a uh, and, you know, a lunatic. All the better for you. Yeah, yeah, there was my George Carlin book upside down. Were you concerned about that, that, that it wouldn't transfer that well to the book? Or? I didn't have, have time to think about it. By the time I, I realized that I had some facility to, be, to do that, that I could write for the page as well, uh, the question was answered, so I, I never had to pose it. Yeah. I wonder if someone would have to be a fan of yours to, to get it or... 
or no, they weren't. I don't know. I, I try to be, you know, the thing about writing for the page that I found, is, of course, is that you realize people can go back and read it over immediately or later. They can read it five straight times. And so you have an obligation to um, to make the sentences clear, take out the things that, that are in the way, and, and yet dress it up so that it's, it does what you want it to do. So I took a lot of care with it, and, and it is a whole different craft, I, and obviously it is. And, and I'm very happy that I have some, some ability at it. Yeah, you did a really good job. Thank it's you. A, it's a fine book. I'm looking forward to the new one. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, George. Ken Kenny, okay. thank you very Bye -bye. much for calling us tonight. We appreciate the call. Our number two five four ten thirty. Mig, is it Mig or Meg? What is it? Midge. Midge. Hi, Midge. Hello, Hi, Midge. Hi. Hi, George. Uh. I thought it was time a woman got on. I thought so, too. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I just wanted to let you know that I've been enjoying your work for years, decades even. Thank you. And uh, I've been to your shows, and I've always left laughing. And, you know, it, I, I try sometimes to memorize what you're saying. Mm -hmm. My memory isn't as good as yours. and um, But you always come back to me at the very best times. Well, thank um, you. I'm curious as to who makes you laugh. Well, I, um, uh, among the the, uh, the perennials, you know, I, I love Woody Allen and Steve Martin and Lily Tomlin sure. and uh, Albert Brooks and people of that type. Um, in terms of people that aren't as well known but somewhat known, Louis Black, I think, has an interesting mind. I like I like people who come in seemingly from left field, the way they uh, look at things. Uh, Stephen Wright was like that, of course, he's an established person. But Mitch yeah. Hedberg, Mitch Hedberg has a Stephen Wright like thing that he does that's even a, a degree or two stranger. Uh, I like Kevin Meany. I think the, the excess. Mm -hmm. I like. I love piling on the excess. Just sure. continue. Just lay it in there. It becomes funny by its sheer relentlessness. So uh, there are a lot of people and most of whom I, I won't think of and and, um, I, and, and and I have to take a long time. And our very own Dennis Leary. And, and, Dennis. Uh, and, oh, of course. Yes, yes, yes. You know, and, and uh, Lenny Clark. And Lenny so, Clark. Uh -huh. Lenny, was he talking about going and getting hitch hitchhiking and Steve, in San Diego. I shouldn't mention his last name because he's on another station, Sweetie. A oh, great, Steve, a great and I man, talked to him the other day. Man, and, and one of the stranger minds, and, and I, I ran Completely into him. Completely warped, obviously certifiable individual. There was, yes, there was something that he did at one time, and I've, I've talked to him about it. I don't remember it now because it's been a couple of years since we spoke of it, but there was something he did that was just just memorable for forever and ever. It'll stay with me. That's why I can't think of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, Judge, well, best yeah. of luck with brain dropping. Thank you. Bye-bye. Mi Midge, uh, bye thank bye you now, very Midge. much. New book is called Napalm and Silly Putty. And yes. uh, definitely get that one. And then go and, I guess, uh, brain droppings is in paper by now, right? It, it, it was it actually a year a after it uh, yeah. was in hardcover. It was, yes. And it's still available. So people can have the collected it, oeuvre. It's what they... Uh, yeah. <laughs> very good. should it's always what, have an oeuvre, right? It's what everyone yeah. should have, at least, or, or maybe Huevos Rancheros or something. Yeah, exactly. Like if you're, yeah, very good. <laughs> George Carlin, thank you for being with us. Thank you very much, as I really appreciate it. Terrific to have you here. And it's fun. It's civilized to be here. Well, we make an effort.